Scott from LIC Ward, an overview of our ATV gear coming up next. For towing the quads, we use our Jeep Wrangler Unlimited, and I have one, and my son has one. Mine's a 2011. His is a year or two old. Each of the Jeeps tow the same 3,500 pounds. Mine has a V6 engine in it. Kyle's also has a V6 with, a little, with additional horsepower more than mine. They both tow the trailer and the quads nicely. The trailer manufacturer is an Aluma. The model number is 8114SR. It is, as it suggests, aluminum trailer. It's fairly lightweight, right around uh, 750 pounds. With the additional things that we have on it, it uh, probably weighs maybe another 50 to 100 pounds with a spare tire and a toolbox. The payload of the trailer is 3,100 pounds. And what we see here is the trailer tongue. It uses a two inch standard ball mount. The clip does accommodate a padlock. The safety chains have a clip so they don't come undone. I do have them crossed as you can see in the picture here, which is standard practice. And I have the chains twisted so they don't drag on the ground. The electrical wiring has the four connector flat plug. And the tongue jack is comes standard as well on the trailer. On this part of the trailer, we have half of what would be a wheel ramp. On the other on the opposite side, there would be the other. And you can use those on one side or the other, depending on if you want to load from the passenger side or the driver's side. If you space those out to the width of whatever it is that you're wanting to drive up on the to the trailer, you can use those, light them up with your wheels, and drive up, and then either back, back off, or better yet, drive forward, just moving them to the other side when the time comes. And this part of the trailer, you can remove the sides as well. There's three attachment points. And uh, of course on the opposite side you can do the same and on the front of the trailer also has a removable side. Uh, the one thing that I've never used this with the sides removed but I could see a potential problem with the wheels being above the deck. So if you had something wide the wheels would obstruct you uh, being able to go out beyond the width of the trailer. Here are two attachment points for either example of the solid side or the ramp. And then on the opposite end would be another one. And then on the solid one, there would be one in the middle. The ramps only have two attachment points. So you just slide the pin out wherever there is an attachment point, And then once all the pins are out, you just slide them up. These wheel ramps have at either end, doesn't matter, uh, a uh, U channel that fits in nicely to the trailer. So when you drive up them and perhaps your tires spin or something, you don't have to worry about the ramps disengaging from the trailer. And nice little, in my opinion, a safety feature there. This is the back of the trailer here. And this is a bar that holds the ramp up. And then this part here just holds the ramp that bifolds together so it doesn't flop all around as you're going over bumps. And this here, as I'm demonstrating, is the pin keeper. That pin pulls off from the left. If you go beyond to the edge of the screen there, you'll see that little bend in that pin. The blue 
ish thing that I am has a spring on it just keeps that from jiggling out. This is the hinge point here for the uh, bifold ramp. The ratchet straps that you see here are retractable, so it makes it nice for storage, uh, keeping things neat, tidy, and organized. This is a DZ truck toolbox. This is lockable storage. On the left side where I'm opening in the latch from, there are two latches, one on each side. There is a key hole, and you can lock this up. This is my son, Kyle's Quad. It's a 2018 Polaris Sportsman 850 with an electric power steering and plenty of accessories that he's added on, which we'll mention some of them as we go here. This is a more or less the viewpoint from the seat. There are some hand protectors. He has a place for his phone there to the right of the display in the center. And he has a controller for a light to switch on his lights up front there amongst all the stock items that he has on here. This is the controller for the handle grip warmers. This is a Rotopax, I believe two and a half gallon supplemental tank. Rotopax sells gas, diesel, water, containers that hold first aid kits. It's a uh, Mounts on the back there. It's a lockable. You can get ones that don't lock, but this is a lockable barrel here. So somebody's not going to come along and turn that crank there in the center there in that circle and take your gas tank from you. The winch is, I believe, 3,500-pound Polaris winch. That's the same on both of our vehicles here. On the front of this quad, these are Fox shocks on both sides. Much better than the stock shocks and springs. Uh, a lot easier to adjust the spring tension. The tires here on the front and the back are new, just different sizes. And the rims are new and they're bead locker rims. The receiver for a hitch is inch and a quarter, and it's a, it's good to have something here in case you need a pull point, so you're not apt to try to go someplace else where you're going to do some damage to the suspension. And you can see here in the upper left corner, he did needed he did need to mount the Fox shocks upside down because he didn't have the the hardware he needed in order to put them right side up. Uh, he seems to be happy with them if there's a reason that anybody knows not to do this if you could just comment for us please then i'll pass that along to to him thank you this quad is the one that i use it is a 2018 polaris sportsman 570 uh, by the way i didn't mention it but the 850 is a twin this is a single cylinder it does have electric power steering this is more or less Close to what you see if you're on the driver's seat. Um, it kind of looks like a mess there on the right. But that is where I mount my iPad on that RAM, that circle RAM thing. It's a little compression stretchy bracket. I just squeeze those together and holds it quite nicely. And the rubber strapping you're seeing that's uh, kind of mismanaged there is something that goes around the corners of the iPad as a more of a security. So when going on bumps, I don't have to worry about it falling out of the mount. I do use a USB 12 volt adapter and I have dual USBs. And uh, one of them usually is always doing the iPad, but there's occasion where I might want to power maybe a GoPro camera or something like that. This Here's just a mount point for my GoPro camera in case something happens to my helmet mount or there's another different reason. Maybe I want two GoPros going, a front view and maybe a point of view on, off the helmet. As I had mentioned before, this winch is a Polaris winch and I believe it will do 3,500 pounds. These tires are the Maxxis. Uh, I did replace them last year. They're quite worn. 
I don't know if I'll go out to Maxis again, but I do know that I need to replace these and I'll do that in by the spring sometime. The rims are not, they may look like bead lockers, but that's just for decoration. These are not bead locker rims. They've held up well. I have uh, a little over a year on them and they, they look pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with them. Price is right. And I also have the Rotopax gas tank on the back. Same thing as Kyle's on the 850 there. And I have the same hitch type, the inch and a quarter. And I like to use this type of an approach because I do have some things around the house that I use the quad for uh, to pull around. I might pull a bow trailer to move it from one point of the property to another or uh, my canoe trailer. Uh, it, it's just nice to have that. Then I have the pin hitch down below that with the hole that I might do my uh, utility wagon or uh, the lawn rake or something like that, the estate rake. This here is my dog carrier. Both my Irish Setter and my Golden Retriever will fit in here, though it's not ideal. I would like to make something a little larger, just don't have the room, especially when the roto packs is off in the back. You can see I opened the door up here just to kind of get a peek inside as to what it looks like from that point of view. And I have this cable that stretches along the length of it and closing the door here, it latches closed. But if you're on the trail and it's bumpy, that part flips up and down and it can just latch that. So then I have this pin here that goes in there and it prevents that from happening. It's a little peace of mind. I want to thank you for stopping by the channel and checking this video out. And until next week, take care. Thank you.